Hi everyone, my name is Karen and the name of this channel is Needlebug. Why Needlebug, you ask? Well, first of all, stitching is my passion. So that hence the word needle because that's one of our stitching tools. And believe it or not, Bug with two G's is my last name. So what a more fitting name than Needlebug for a channel. I decided to do this video today because I really wanted to do diagonal stitching and there really aren't many videos out there that show diagonal stitching. There's one by Blitz Stitch, of course, and I watched that one numerous times. However, I didn't particularly like to stitch vertically. I prefer to stitch horizontally. I get less confused. My mind doesn't work the way it should in stitching vertically or the way you need it to work in stitching vertically. Just wasn't my cup of tea. Before that, I tried many different ways of parking and the first time I did, I hated it. I hated all those strings hanging. They made me nuts to say the least. So I went to stitching my old way of by color per page and then I jumped on the extreme cross stitch wagon and started stitching by color over the whole piece well needless to say that got boring really really quick the other thing I didn't like about that is or even stitching by page is the fact that when you have so many colors already in place and you need to place those odd stitches or areas where you're coming up in a hole that already has three threads in it and this is the fourth one there's that tendency for your threads to loosen and i didn't like the way my piece was looking so it was back to youtube back to more stitching videos back to more parking videos until finally I came up with a way that works the best for me. And that is diagonal parking and doing one row or one line at a time. I have found that works the best. I don't get page lines that way. I, my stitches are so very much neater. And hopefully you can see that on the video. Hopefully I have this zoomed in close enough. And this is my first video, folks, so please bear with me. I'm really in a learning curve here, so hopefully this gives you information you need to try this technique and we'll move merrily along. The first thing I did was I organized, and I'll just give you a little tidbits of information here too, because a lot of my friends say, oh, Karen, you should do videos because you know so much. Well, I don't really know that's the case, but I do have some little tidbits and we'll throw those in along the way. I got this and it's Stitcher's Retreat. It's a freebie chart from Heaven and Earth Designs. And of course I had to buy the whole kit because that's just how I am. But what I did is I love these Peco organizers and that is how I organize my thread. I put all the symbols on, put some thread on. When that thread runs out, I refill it from that master cards that you get from Heaven and Earth Designs. I find that this really does work the best for me. They're, the thread is handy. It's just a matter of picking. It's on two of these Pecos and that's all the colors for this chart. So it makes it really convenient to just pick one up Pull that strand of floss off and you do that just by taking your needle and hopefully you can see this where am I here and just going under and picking up one strand and then just pull it right off which is just wonderful I love it it's for me the best way to go um, the first thing I do when I get my chart, and it doesn't matter if you're using a paper chart or you're using a tablet. I use a tablet, however, I did print off a section on paper just for this demonstration. 
but what I do, and as you can see here, this is the chart, this is the piece of many different tries. Once I started diagonals, I went on this diagonal, as you can see, because then I was stitching from the bottom up. Well, I found I did not like that because as you're working up, your thread is always on top and it's always in your way. So I nixed that real quick. So I went to stitching on this diagonal because my threads are always below, as you can see here. Much easier. The first thing you do is mark your chart, and what I like to do is use the 10 by 10 squares and divide it in half. That's the easiest way. So as you're working down your chart, you have a good reference point when you get to the corner. You can, you have that reference point to say that you're still on track for where you're stitching. I personally prefer pre-gridded fabric and as you can see over here are some spots where I was doing the extreme cross country but I prefer the pre-gridded fabric because even though you really can do it without and it's not a big issue it does help your counting and your placement say you have to park a thread down three or four rows or even if you decide to that you're going to park 10 10 stitches away as your limit it makes it easier to find that spot down here for the 10 stitches I'm going to try to keep my hand out of your way here like I said this is a learning curve this is all new to me so as you can see here I marked all my diagonals and what's crossed off here is things that I have already stitched so my next row to stitch is going to be right here or right here which only has three colors and I chose this section of the chart because it does only have three colors and it makes it a little bit easier to explain. One other tip I will show you while I'm while we're getting ready to uh, place these stitches is how I thread my needle because a lot of you are going to say oh my gosh this is a lot of threading and unthreading of needles. Yes it is. I will say that right up front. You kind of feel like you're always threading a needle to do just several stitches, change a color, thread a needle. However, and yes, it is a bit slower. I'm going to tell you that right up front too. It takes a little bit more time than maybe some of the other techniques out there. However, I will say that for me, not missing stitches not getting confused as to where I am and my stitches looking far neater than they did it's worth it to me to have to thread a needle more often now I do not use a needle threader I have not used a needle threader in over 30 years I do not lick my floss I did lick my floss at one time but again I have not done that over 30 years I took some classes through the National Needlework Association many many years ago and the instructor that I worked with showed me this really cool way to thread a needle now at the time I was doing a lot of hardanger embroidery and I was using pearl cotton and it was really a fabulous way so I just used that same technique and brought it over into my cross stitch world so what you do is let's get it in the thing here I hold my floss like this over my finger okay I take my needle and pardon my shaking I'm just a little nervous plus I tend to have a little bit of a shake and I hold it on top of the thread and then I just push it well now of course it's not going to work right because I'm okay I hold it on top of the thread and just leave it loose and push it up and your thread should pop right through your needle so that's my quick way of threading just a little tidbit and I can do it again just to show you and you just hold it over your finger lay your needle on top and then just push up and it pops 
okay I can't see here I need my stitching glasses I forgot to put those on um, it just pop okay make me a fool now it just pops right through and then you grab the see it's making a jerk out of me I don't have my other glasses on Okay, let me get my other glasses. I'll be right back. They're right here. I just have to reach for them. Oops. Sorry about that. Okay, here we go. I'm one of those people who has to have four eyes. Okay. Lay it on top. And then just hold it loosely and pull it through you're so you're really kind of rolling your finger pushing it up as you're letting the thread go and that loop should pop right up through so this is what I do to stitch now as you can hopefully let me get it in frame here all right this is the next row I'm going to stitch what I do is I look at that row and say to myself, what symbol has the most stitches? That is the symbol I save for last. Why? Because and when you, when you look at, there are places in your chart where you might have, and here's a place, you have this I'll call it a sunburst over here and then you don't have it again till over here so there's stitches in between sometimes you have places where it's five or six stitches in between I do those first because I will carry the thread from one to the other okay in doing it that way when you do your color with the most stitches, you're covering all those thread carries so that you don't have loose thread hanging across the back. Are my backs perfect? Absolutely not. Are they terrible? Absolutely not. And after we do this, I'll flip it over to show you the back. Does it get bulky? Yes and no. Where it tends to bulk up a bit is where you have 10 stitches and 10 different colors. And maybe you're at the beginning of a page where you had to start all of those colors. So you have, if you're doing a loop stitch, no big deal. I'm stitching over one so I can't do a loop stitch. So I have little tails on the back. I do a sort of lasso method. Um, well, really, it's more of an away thread where I just put my needle down a couple stitches away from where I'm going to stitch, come up, go back down, catch that thread on my way back up. So I have anchored it at least one time. Hopefully, other stitches will catch that. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, especially when you have a lot of places that, a row where you're anchoring a lot of threads. So, that being said, what I'm going to do, and I moved it out of the way here, on this row is, I'm going to do the starburst first, then I'm going to do this oblong one, then we'll fill in the rest. Okay, so how I do that is pick up this thread, get the old needle threaded, it's that quick. Um, it's hard to keep my hand out of your way. Let's, let's stitch two-handed. I'll go down, come up. I don't need this thread in this row anymore. However, I do need it right below it. 
so I'm going to park it where I need it again which will be the second stitch in on the next row down okay I'm gonna let it there the next one I will do is the oblong one again thread the needle and once you get used to threading your needle this way it really is pretty easy pardon the noise outside my husband's picking up leaves um, and of course he has to do it right here by the porch where I'm stitching so again do the oblong stitch bring it back up and down and park it where I need it again, which is right down here. In either one of these two, I tend to not always work the same direction in a row, so I just put it where we're going to use it next. So I'll put it right here. And then this one is the one with the most color. That's the I don't know what just I don't I don't have names for all these stitches. Some people name them, some people don't. Um, some I have names for. Some I don't. Okay, this thread doesn't like me this morning. Uh, I should also say if you have trouble threading your needle flip the eye over because an eye does have I put lotion on to this morning which I should not have done an eye does have a side that because when a side that is maybe a little wider than the other side because it's where they punch that hole in to make the eye so it does each side of the eye is a little bit different so if you can't thread the needle from one side flip it over and usually it will work right away for you so once again we're going to complete this color with the most stitches now two-handed stitching i find is also rather wonderful I personally have my dom I'm right-handed so I have my dominant hand on the bottom and my non-dominant hand on the top so my right hand is on the bottom my left hand is on the top reason I do that is because my right hand really pretty much knows what to do my left hand needs the help of my brain and my eyes so my eyes are telling it where that hole is and then once you get going and get the rhythm especially when you're doing an area of a lot of stitches of one color it really does get faster so we're getting all of these stitched I hope you can see that I'm getting a little bit of shadows here like I said please bear with me this is the first time I'm doing a video and I have a lot to learn <laughs> okay one more I hope you can see this okay. Alrighty. There we go. So now I'm going to place it right here because that's going to be the next stitch of this color. So I'll look again and say, okay, well, the other thing I learned rather quickly was mark your rows off as you do them because if you don't you may especially if you didn't grid your fabric 
you may just get lost pretty quickly. Okay, so I would mark this off that this row is now done. Okay, if I didn't have gridding on here and I didn't mark this off, I would have a little bit of a struggle to figure out where I am. But since my gridding on here matches perfectly with my gridding on here, it makes it much easier, much, much easier to keep my place and where I'm at. So now, how about we do this because we don't, well, I'm not gonna end up going that far yet. Okay. Now we're gonna do the next row okay so we have the starbursts we have the elongated ones and we have the X's with the black background okay this time because there's only there's four stitches of the color I just used the X's with the back black background that does have the most stitches however that being said, there's one here, you skip two, there's one here, you skip three, and then there's three. So I have more long runs on the back with that color now than I do with the starburst because here I'm only skipping one, and with the elongated ones, I'm not skipping any. So I'm going to do these first and then go back and fill in the others. So again, it's a little bit of looking at your chart, figuring out how many thread, what's gonna have the most thread carries, what's gonna have the most stitches, and how can I do that most effectively to keep my back semi-neat? Is it gonna be a perfect back? Heck no. And you know what? In these designs, you can't expect a perfect back. Is anyone going to see it but you? Probably not. So, seriously, you know what? Last time I checked, there were no stitching police. They've never, never knocked at my door. And I've been stitching for... Okay, I'll give away my age here but I've been stitching for 45 years. I've not had stitching police at my door. So I say, this is a hobby. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be enjoyable. It's supposed to be relaxing. So you know what? My bottom line is do what makes you happy. Life is just too short. Oops. Here we go. Life is too short to be stressed out over a hobby. Okay, and now I'm going to park it in this one because that's going to be the next place if you look at the chart. Okay, we'll do this one real quick because there's only one of him. And then we'll put him in the next place. But this is pretty much the technique that I use, that I have found has worked the absolute best for me. And the simple reason being, I don't have to deal with a gazillion threads. I'm dealing with just the number of threads within this 10 stitch wide column. Okay, sometimes it's gonna be 10. However, it's never gonna be more than 10. Well, it may be if you're using some down below and you have to, but you're never gonna have, as you see in some places, the hundreds and hundreds of threads just hanging down and people going, oh my God, what do I do with all of these? 
it also helps me to keep better track of which is which. Granted, you don't need to know the, know the color number. You have to trust that you're parking correctly. And if you're parking correctly, then it shouldn't be a problem. If you get to a spot where, oh wait, this is not making sense to me. Why is this color parked here? That isn't right. You can pick up your organizer or whatever you use and match that color to the one that you think it is. If it's not that color, then what I do is I look around and go, okay, what color is a side of this? Could it possibly be this one? Now, I will tell you there have been times because I have not marked off my rows as I should have that I was actually on the wrong row. Now, that being said, sometimes I'll rip it and fix it. However, in this area right here where I'm working now, this is all background. This is the background between the mirror and the dressing screen. It's above the light. So it's all background. Seriously, if there's a stitch or two that is misplaced, no big deal because who's gonna know that besides me? Nobody. Is it gonna make a difference in the overall of the chart? Absolutely not. Now, if I was down at the girls that are sitting at the table sewing and it was off down there, would I rip it and fix it? Totally, especially if it was in her face. Absolutely, I would rip and fix because those areas are more crucial that the stitches be what they need to be. In the background, no. You know, a lot of people say, use the three foot rule. If you stand three feet away and you notice it, then you worry. If you don't, chances are nobody else is going to notice it either and the only one that knows is you. And I challenge you to go back a month later and find that stitch that's wrong. You absolutely can. Now, talking about the three foot rule, I will also say this. There are people, and I was one of them, who are thread waxers or thread heaven people and I'm going to try and move this frame just a little bit to see if you can see okay now I was one of those people who was on a kick of having to wax my thread I don't know if you can see it I can see it only up close you may be able to notice it but once again this is my piece that is full of so many trials to see what I like, what I didn't like, what works best for me. That seriously, if I can't see those things three foot away, I am not worrying about it. But I was one of those people who waxed my threads. And on this up here, this first row of pages, especially the second half of that row, I was waxing. Now, if you can see it, which I think maybe you can, you'll know what I'm talking about. If not, I'll point it out to you. But right across here, you can see a line. I'm hoping that line goes away when I wash it. If not, you can't see it when you stand back, so I'm not really worried. But here's the difference and why that line is there. First of all, up here, I was using a different technique. I was using the technique by Carolyn Mazio. So I was stitching in 10 by 10 squares. I was doing all of one color within that square um, and then parking in the square below. And I was waxing my thread. 
So you see, if you notice, this thread up in here is not as shiny as this thread down here. Because down here, I am stitching on a diagonal. I am not waxing my thread. So from up close, you can notice a bit of a difference. If I, I don't know if I can zoom you out far enough. No, you're out as far as you can go. Um, but see up close, you can see a bit of a difference. If I zoom you back out, it's not quite as noticeable. So if you choose to use wax, go for it. If you choose not to wax, there's nothing wrong with that. If you choose Thread Heaven, totally go for it. Do what makes you happy. Do what you are most comfortable with. So with that, I'm not going to do a whole lot more stitching for you because hopefully I think you got the idea. Again, the important thing to remember is cross off that row. Oops, let me move you back down here. Okay, cross off that row when you finish it because you don't want to come back and go, oops, where am I? Again, you can use your iPad or your Android tablet. You can do paper. You mark your columns. Now, some people, I tend to want to work across a row of pages. Some people will go from the very top, like Blitz Stitch does. He goes from the very top of his design, and then his co he will run that column all the way to the end of that column, all the way down the whole length of his piece. The reason I don't do that is I do prefer to work on my tablet. I choose not to use paper. I just find the whole process much easier to work on my tablet. In working on a tablet, if you're going from the top all the way down the length of your page, every time you get to this intersection, because here's right here is my page ending. So I would have to butt a page against this and if you're using paper, that's great. You can just tape your pages together and keep on going, okay? On a tablet, however, you have to flip back and forth. And there is a point because right here is my, right here is my intersection of where four pages come together, right here. So what I would have to do is flip between four pages at some point to get that column to continually go down, okay? Because I would be coming down, well, I'd be coming down here, which would continue to go down, and here, which would continue to go down. So I'm going to have to butt several pages together. And on a tablet, for me, too much trouble, too confusing. I'm afraid I would get lost. So I choose to go just to the end of the page and work across this whole row of pages. When I get over here, let me see if I can get you over there. I'm almost at the, well, maybe I'll do better moving this. Um, this is the end of the design over here and as you see I was doing extreme cross country for a while um, but I will work over to this end and then I will go back and go back to the beginning and work again in across the pages of the whole row until I have that row done and so forth and work down the whole piece of fabric until I have it finished this, by the way, is only page 15 of 72. So we have a long, long way to go. This is a freebie chart on Heaven and Earth Designs if there are people that want to 
stitch it um, you can look it up it's under the freebie section so with that if you have any questions please leave it in the comments I will be happy to answer if there's any little tidbits or things that you want to know or want to learn please do leave that also in the comments and if I have that knowledge I will certainly be more than willing to share it with you so with that I will bid you farewell and thank you very much for taking some time from your busy days especially here at a holiday season to spend some time with me and thanks for watching